Howdy doodly neighborinos. Hope you've been enjoying the CES content that's been out on the internet. Thank you to everybody who joined in on last night's live stream where we covered the AMD, Intel, and Sony CES keynotes uh, all in one live stream. So thank you to everybody who stuck with me through that. And today we're going to be going over a lot of stuff that was unveiled at CES, some stuff that wasn't, and we're going to start off with some stuff by Xbox, which they haven't announced anything at CES, but we'll talk about that in a bit after I tell you about today's video sponsor, Displate. Yes, my friends, they make dope metal prints that you mount on your wall with magnets. They just go on with magnets. Everything, all these Displates. They're great, they're fantastic. They have tons of options to choose from, whether you're into more PlayStation games like Final Fantasy or you're into more Xbox games like Halo and other stuff. They have whatever you want. Or if you're just into nature or schematics, they have everything that you could possibly want. So if you use the link in the video description, displate.com forward slash UFD tech official and use coupon code UFD, you'll save 15% and you'll get amazing looking metal prints. They're fantastic. They mount with magnets, so if you screw it up, all you have to do is realign it. It's the best for people who are not inclined to get things right on the first try, like me. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the exciting news that's coming out from Xbox. Yes, my friends, Phil Spencer, the head of the Xbox division over at Microsoft, tweeted out some stuff because he didn't want Sony to steal the spotlight, spotlight with their CES keynote, so he tweeted out this picture of what is the Project Scarlet SOCD. Die. This obviously is going to be the SOC that should be in the Xbox Series X or the Xbox X, depending on who you ask, because Microsoft is terrible at naming things. Either way, this is a pretty impressive shot. You can see it's 8K down there because of the freaking Xbox's 8K support, which is going to be spotty. You're not going to play games at 8K. You'll probably be able to decode 8K media, but that's neither here nor there. One of the key things about this is that the color of the SOC is something that you typically find on TSMC 7 nanometer production, which is what we're finding in all of AMD's new GPU stuff that's coming out. But somebody went through the trouble of sizing up the die based on what you can see the key is down here showing off just how much bigger this die is versus what's in the current Xbox One X or Project Scorpio. So what we see is that the estimation for the Scarlet APU, which is the new one, is 401 square millimeters, whereas the Scorpio was 359 square millimeters. And this is a big deal because not only is the die size going to be larger, but it's also on a smaller process. So the actual components should be smaller with seven nanometers, but then also it's larger larger, which means that we might get a lot more power than we were anticipating. So this will definitely be considerably faster than the Scorpio. The guesses in the comments and around the internet from what I can see is between 9 and 12 teraflops, which the Xbox One X comes in at 6 teraflops. So 50 to 100% faster than the current fastest console on the market right now, which would put it in pretty good uh, mid-range gaming PC territory, which is which is quite interesting. So this is officially coming out from Xbox. The numbers I just discussed with you are speculation, but Phil Spencer, not wanting Sony to take the spotlight with their CES keynote, tweets this out. But let's go ahead and talk about what Sony unveiled at CES, and it was the logo. Yes, my friends, the PS5 hype that we were waiting for at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, they showed us that they were able to replace a four with a five. And the PS5 logo was the only world's first announcement regarding the new console that came out yesterday. Obviously, the PlayStation 4 was not announced at CES. It was announced at its own press conference, so we'll likely see that happen with the PS5. Sony will make its own to-do about it. Xbox thought the Game Awards was the best place to unveil the new Xbox Series X. Sony thinks that they can just wait out Microsoft and its stupid marketing and then unveil what they have later on. So the PS5, that's the new logo. Also, Sony showed off a car using sensors from a whole bunch of different companies. I doubt they're ever going to make that cool. They also unveiled some new numbers regarding the PlayStation 4, the PSVR, and all of that. They've sold 106 million PS4 so far, 5 million PSVRs, they have 38.8 million people using PS Plus, and they have 103 million active monthly users. So still a juggernaut of a console. And then another console-like thing that came out, Dell slash Alienware unveiled their Concept UFO, which is a gaming PC that's portable, 
but also switch light. So as you can see in the video that's playing right now, you can remove the not Joy-Cons from this. It can be docked to a TV. It's running Windows 10. Uh, it basically has its own custom GUI on top of it to make game launching a lot easier and looks very much like the Nintendo Switch default launcher. But I don't think they're ever going to come out with this. This isn't the first concept that we've seen like this. The Smock Z, which was on Kickstarter ages ago and a lot of people think is vaporware, but they continue to show off at trade shows, is an example of that. This is running a Ryzen embedded processor. We'll see if Dell slash Alienware actually releases that concept UFO. But a company that did show off a concept and is now releasing it as an actual product is Origin's new Big O PC. Yes, that's a great name for that, which basically combines the power of a gaming PC with an Xbox One or a PlayStation in one of Corsair's cases, the dual chambered cases where they separate the consoles from each other. And in case you're not familiar, one of our very early videos here at UFD Tech, we actually put a water-cooled Xbox One with a gaming PC. It was Skylake at the time. We did it terribly, but if you want to check out that video, you can watch it right up there. But they're selling it either Xbox Edition or PS4 Pro Edition. The Xbox is a 1S Digital Edition, so the PS4 Pro probably will cost a little bit more. The base cost of one of these is actually going to come in at $2,500 and then scale up based on the PC hardware specs that you choose. And in case you want to stream the console to the PC side of things, they're also going to include an Elgato 4K60 Pro capture card so that you can run it off of the PC. But combining PC with consoles, just like peanut butter and jelly. Everything, you just gotta enjoy that sandwich. But the last little bit of console news is what AMD did during their press conference last night, which we'll get into the more news about that in a little bit, was show off a fake Xbox Series X. Yes, my friends, they took a 3D render from a website called TurboSquid and then put that in their keynote video and it shows off the IO ports, as you can see. And everybody was like, oh, we got the IO ports when AMD was like, uh, no, we didn't have actual permission to use that, we just kind of faked it. So that's not the Xbox Series X, it's fake. Good job, AMD. Uh, they also unveiled their new Threadripper chip, 3990X, 64 cores, 128 threads, 4.3 gigahertz boost, should be coming out February 21st with a retail price of $3,990, 3990X calling costing $39.90. AMD is all good with that number crunch and stuff. Excuse me, I said February 21st, I meant February 7th. They also unveiled what is likely going to help dethrone Intel from the mobile market, which is their new APUs, the Ryzen 7 4800U and 4800H. Both are eight core, 16 thread CPUs with differing levels of base and boost clocks. The 4800U has a 1.8 gigahertz base. Uh, the 4800H has a 2.9 gigahertz base. They both are using Radeon graphics which interestingly, as you can see on this slide, AMD called eight Radeon cores, and Lisa Su made sure to divulge that yes, these are Vega cores, but they're not the normal Vega cores that they've been using, they're actually super Vega cores. <laughs> and they have 59% better performance than the original version. So it's not a normal Vega 8 like you would find in one of like, let's say the 2400G or 3400G from their Ryzen APUs. This is faster than that. They also announced that they're gonna be bringing new GPUs to the mobile market. The 5600M and 5700M hasn't been announced when those are coming out. Available first half 2020. The leaked benchmark showed that the 5600M might actually be able to beat the RTX 2060, but we'll have to wait for actual benchmarks until then. And then one of the laptops that did get announced, the Zephyrus G14, also had a slide that's saying that it might get the 4900HS, which is a CPU that AMD didn't announce. So either this is a typo or we're still going to be expecting new CPUs from AMD to come into the mobile sector and further put Intel behind. They also announced the 5600 XT actual desktop graphics card. It's coming out January 21st for $279, which puts it squarely against a 1660 Ti, according to AMD slides. It should beat the 1660 Ti at the exact same price point, but we'll have to wait for actual reviews to come out for that. And then there's also a report that came out that's saying that B550 and A550 20 chipsets for the new Ryzen CPU should be coming out sometime in Q1 of this year, even though other reports said it should come out before the end of last year. This is something that I have been saying since Computex last year, saying that I was told that it would be coming out in Q1 of this year. Because B550, at least according to the people we talked to at Computex, we won't be seeing that until Q1 of 2020. So score one me for getting right sources. Now let's switch some gears to Intel with their 
Sarah stuff, which was supposed to be action packed, but really just ended up being like watching your grandpa play shuffleboard. It was awful, except for the guy from Adobe. He was amazing with his hair. He was fun. He had tons of energy and he made some really disturbing noises on, on stage. Can you feel it? All right, all right, all right. I, I feel my hair growing. The sun. <laughs> Anyways, the big news is that they showed off their GPU. Yes, the DG1 got shown off by playing Destiny 2. That was it. They didn't show the GPU. They didn't really show anything besides, hey, <laughs> it can play a game that came out a couple of years ago. They're saying it should be able to play HD games. Um, and then they also showed a Tiger Lake equipped notebook, which is running Project Z graphics. They showed that running Warframe, but it wasn't a whole lot. Intel, super boring for most of it. Even if you're really super into AI, the majority of the keynote felt like you are just taking a really good nap and you woke up so the world is hazy and foggy and you're kind of having a hard time getting going even though it's the middle of the day and you should be getting to work and you know you can't because your brain's all mushy. That was the keynote. It was awful. They discussed more Tiger-like stuff, just kind of that's coming out for mobile. They also said that Thunderbolt 4 should be coming out for Tiger Lake. And then they also showed off the world's first foldable laptop, which is a 17 inch foldable tablet, which is basically like the Galaxy Fold, much bigger. It's terrible. Nobody's gonna buy this. This is awful. They also showed off a super tiny motherboard for Tiger Lake. And then they teased their new Comet Lake CPUs for mobile not for desktop. They didn't make any mention of desktop stuff. The mobile stuff, the Comet Lake H CPUs coming in at five gigahertz on mobile. And considering the fact that it's still gonna be on 14 nanometers, they're not getting this by increasing power efficiency. They're getting this by just saying, our cores can run really fast for a little bit of time until you thermal throttle. That's likely what's gonna be happening. So Core H series coming soon at over five gigahertz. Yay! They also unveiled their Ghost Canyon Nook in case you care about that. MSI also showed off their GS66 Stealth laptop, which it comes in at a barely legal battery size of 99.9 .9 watt hours. Elgato and Corsair unveiled a few new things as well, including the 4K60 S Plus, which is kind of cool. It's basically their capture card, but instead of needing a PC, it can actually write to an SD card, which is good for mobile stuff. And then also they announced a new key light called the Key Light Air. There's that. They also unveiled the K95 RGB Platinum XT, which has some stream deck integration with the macro keys that come on this thing. And then Corsair without Elgato announced the new A500 Air CPU cooler, which looks amazing, has ML120 fans on it. And then they also announced some new liquid coolers, which apparently they're stealing branding from AMD, calling it the XT variants. And then lastly, I'm sure you guys have seen all across the internet, Asus's new ROG Swift 360 Hertz display with G-Sync NVIDIA and Asus partnering up to make what is gonna be the world's fastest gaming display. You can check out Linus Tech Tips video on it over there where they unveil just kind of how Asus and NVIDIA are getting this technology done. But that's the quickest wrap up I can do right now. There's gonna be more CES content that's coming out over the next couple of days. So tomorrow's hot news will be more of that. But biggest news is Microsoft unveiling stuff, Sony showing us a logo, AMD coming out with things that we knew we were getting and not much else, no Zen 3 or Navi 2 talk, um, and then Intel being the most exciting press conference I've ever seen. Anyways, that's gonna be the end of this episode of Hot News. Don't forget to check out Displates at displate.com forward slash UFD tech official. Use the link in the video description to check those out and decor your room with some amazing, amazing metal prints. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UFD tech channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you smile the face again in the next video. Bye.